Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India chapter positive emotional states and processes our next chapter is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is very important area in psychology as well as in positive psychology it has been observed during 1990s uh, that this decade is famous or very important for brain studies and they call it decade of the brain but there were moments during those 10 years when the popular press seemed ready to declare it as the decade of the heart and as a reflection of the growing interest in emotions. So, 1990s started with the notion decade of the brain and its land up on uh, decade of the heart and scholars reflected and took lot of interest in emotions. So, looking at growing interest in uh, emotions, they declared this decade as decade of the heart. There are various questions and reasons why emotional intelligence is very important. Do you think only intelligent people are successful in their life? Probably your answer is no because we observe in our day to day life there are various people who are not very intelligent, but very successful in their life. On the other hand, there are very intelligent people, but they are not that much success in their life. So, question is why do some people with high IQ fail in life, while others with moderate IQ succeed? And this questions answers lying in emotional intelligence studies. Let us compare EQ and IQ. Daniel Goleman in 1995 reported that 20 percent of success is due to IQ and the rest is because of emotional and social intelligence. So, role of intelligence is that much only and rest of the role of other factors, other non-cognitive factors like emotional and social intelligence. He did another study in 1998 and he found in this study that 67 percent of the abilities that are considered essentially for effective performance were emotional competencies. So, role of emotional competencies is twice as much as IQ and expertise. So, it means studies showing that IQ is lesser important than EQ and uh, it is just double as these studies are showing that. Broadly what is EQ or emotional quotient? There are various definitions, various theories, various you know ways of assessing uh, emotional intelligence or emotional quotient, but broad view of EQ is it is essential for interpersonal and intrapersonal relationships. When we say interpersonal relationship, it means understanding others and their feelings. And when we say intrapersonal relationship, it means understanding yourself, your goals, your intentions, responses, behavior and all. So, broadly emotional intelligence is to understand oneself as well as to understand others emotions and uh, way of managing, way of describing, way of uh, handling others as well as oneself's emotions. Then next point is what is emotionally intelligent behavior? There is a role of uh, non-ability factors when we say about uh, emotional intelligence and uh, related factors. It has been observed that EQ as well as IQ both are very important and IQ is able to share or able to describe certain percentage of variance, but still there is some scope and there are various other factors like um, maybe emotional intelligence and related factors. So, the person who has uh, proposed uh, intelligence theory as well as famous Wechsler intelligence test we have. He observed that role of some other factors along with IQ. So, in his definition he described it in detail. He mentioned that 
individuals with identical IQ may differ very markedly in regard to their effective ability to cope with their environment. It means with the same IQ, people may deal differently in environmental settings. So, if it's so, it means environmental factors role if, is, uh, if it's there, then they could have different behavior. It is not possible to account for more than 50 percent to 70 percent of the inter-test correlational variance after all recognizable intellectual factors are eliminated. This leaves anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the total factorial variance unaccountable for. So, it means studies showing that there is certain percentage of variance like 50 percent to 70 percent which can be counted as intellectual factors or due to intellectual factors. Still there is scope of 30 to 50 percent of total factorial variance which is unaccounted and this account could be in terms of drive, in terms of energy, in terms of impulsiveness and various other non-cognitive factors which have significant role in our performance. So, it means the scholars who are talking about intelligence as well as intelligence test, they also observed that there is scope to give importance to some other factors. Now, next point is where did the concept of emotional intelligence come from? From where it has come? There are various theories, various scholars work and uh, they emphasized on emotional aspects and social aspects in our behavior. Let us take one by one. There are some recent theories in intelligence where they have given importance to intrapersonal and interpersonal factors. For example, in 1983 Gardner first published his theory on multiple intelligence and he included concept of intrapersonal, intrapersonal means self-awareness, self-management as well as interpersonal. It means relationship awareness, management and such kind of factors they have included in intelligence theories. Another model is Barron in 1988 placed intelligence, placed emotional intelligence in the context of personality theory specifically as a model of well-being. When he described personality as well as well-being, then he gave importance to uh, emotional intelligence and he proposed theory as well as psychological tests to measure uh, or to assess uh, emotional intelligence level. Another contribution is by Solvay and uh, Meyer. Uh, they first proposed their theory of emotional intelligence in 1990s and defined it as an ability model. I will discuss it in detail in next slides. Another scholar, Goldman, uh, he also worked on emotional intelligence and his uh, book as well as uh, certain theories, certain you know research papers are really popularized in the field of psychology. The concept of emotional intelligence and formulated emotional intelligence in terms of a theory of job and work performance and he proposed mixed model. In these uh, three models broadly they uh, studied correlation between success, achievement and emotional intelligence and these uh, models are famous in organization sector also. Let us take one by one all scholars work. First of all, Gardner's seven intelligence. So, along with these seven intelligence, as I mentioned, he included inter and intrapersonal intelligence also. So, he had uh, various, you know, type of intelligence. He described various type of intelligence like logical, uh, mathematical, linguistics, musical, uh, spatial and uh, then he focused on bodily kinestics and uh, then interpersonal as well as intrapersonal intelligences. So, because we are talking about emotional intelligence here, that is why our interest is in interpersonal and intrapersonal uh, intelligences. So, interpersonal capacities to discern and respond appropriately to the moods, temperaments, motivation and desire of other people. So, ability to in fact understand others behavior, others motivation, others emotions, ability to describe, manage and regulate others emotions is part of interpersonal intelligence. So, he is saying that then therapist, salesperson or where you have best dealing with others, these kind of jobs are suitable for you. On the other hand, another one is intrapersonal access to one's own feelings and the ability to discriminate among them and draw upon them 
to guide behavior. Uh, knowledge of one's own strengths, weaknesses, desires and intelligences etc. So, your knowledge about yourself is most important as per this intelligence type. It means person with detailed accurate self knowledge. If uh, he or she is, then he has such kind of intelligence, intrapersonal, intrapersonal intelligence. Then next point is, is there multiple intelligence? We are talking about intelligence, we are talking about emotional intelligence, we are talking about social intelligence. So, let us take example of another theory again from intelligence by Robert Sternberg. He proposed triachic theory of intelligence and he said there are three type of intelligence. First one is analytic or componential intelligence. Componential or analytic intelligence means mental processes used in learning and how to solve problems. So, ability to learn as well as recall. Such kind of person would perform best in day to day life exams or in academics we can say because he has best capability to learn as well as ability to recall the things. Second type of intelligence is as per uh, Sternberg's model that is creative or experiential intelligence. It means ability to deal with novel situations by drawing on existing skills and knowledge. It means you are able to solve problem by using number of solutions. And in this case, if you are doing PhD or research or such kind of uh, you know jobs where you have to have number of solutions, then you may perform best as per this uh, type of intelligence. Then third one is practical or contextual intelligence, ability to adapt to the environment and this type of uh, intelligence is also called street smartness. This is quite close to emotional intelligence. So, your ability to deal with environmental settings and with the other people and if you have such kind of intelligence then as per contextual you know or situational setting you may perform best that is called practical or contextual intelligence. So, like that there are various type of intelligence have been identified and recent scholars especially when they defined intelligence, they give enough scope to emotional intelligence and social intelligence also. So, how these two are different? For example, social intelligence, it is to know how involved in understanding social situations and managing oneself successfully. So, your ability to understand or to involve with the different social settings that is social intelligence. On the other hand, emotional intelligence, it is the ability to perceive, express, understand and regulate emotions. So, there are various theories to understand emotional intelligence and that is subject matter of today's class and I will discuss number of uh, theories to describe emotional intelligence. Let us learn emotional intelligence as per different theories how do they define emotional intelligence and which factors are important as per these theories. First model is by Myers and Solvay. They defined emotional intelligence as abilities to perceive, appraise and express emotions, to access and or generate feelings when they facilitate thoughts, to understand emotion and emotional knowledge and to regulate emotion to promote emotional and intellectual growth. So, that was their definition to understand emotional intelligence and accordingly they focused on the four factors. Here I think we should know same thing I am repeating once again. So, if uh, later on we will talk about scale developed by Myers and Solvay, in this scale these definitions or a, at least phrases must reflect and that is called construct validity. So, items of this scale which is based on this theory must be quite close to these definitions. So, that is why understanding these definitions or sub factors of uh, emotional intelligence are very important for us. So, the first is or first branch or first uh, uh, you know branch of emotional intelligence or can say factor of emotional intelligence is emotional perception and expression. It means recognizing and inputting verbal and non-verbal information from the emotional system. Second branch is 
emotional facilitating of thought referring to using emotions as part of cognitive processes such as creativity and problem solving. So, first where you are learning or perceiving you know and expressing emotions on the other hand in the second one emotional facilitation of thoughts. It means your emotions are facilitating your certain type of thoughts or cognitive processes that is why you are more creative and you have better ability to solve problems. Then third one is emotional understanding. It involves cognitive processing of emotions that is using insight and knowledge to understand one's feelings of the feeling of others. So, emotional understanding in which you understand yours as well as other emotions and you have insight and knowledge to understand such kind of emotions. Then fourth one is emotional management. It means regulation of emotions in oneself and in other people. So, you are able to manage your own emotions as well as others emotions as well as you have that uh, type of regulation of emotions which help you to facilitate that management of emotions. So, in the scales they have certain you know sub uh, test in which they focus mainly on identifying emotions and uh, the, there are some scales through which they study your ability to identify emotions and maybe identify emotions in faces that could be one type of test. Second one is using emotions to facilitate thought, use emotions to solve problems. So, then they have certain problems in which you need to use cert uh, certain emotions to solve those problems. Third is understanding emotions, figure out what makes people tick and man managing emotions make optimal decisions. So, through such kind of activities as per this model we test your emotional intelligence level and again I am repeating these are the definitions of uh, the factors which have uh, proposed by this theory. So, it means whichever psychological test or uh, sub test you are taking this, these definitions must reflect in your psychological test and by using those tests one can obtain someone's emotional intelligence level as per this theory. Now, next model is that is Goldman mixed model. Again, he focused mainly on four aspects of emotional intelligence. So, first of all, let us know what is his definition of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence as per uh, Goldman's theory or Goldman's explanation is the capacity for recognizing our own feelings and feelings of others. So, that is the first factor ability to recognize or better ability to recognize our own feelings as well as other feelings if we have high level of emotional intelligence. Second is for motivating ourselves and uh, for managing emotions well in uh, ourselves and in our relationships. So, broadly way of managing ourselves as well as others in relationship. So, this is the definition of emotional intelligence which is called mixed model as per Goldman theory. Now, which factors he has identified as emotional intelligence factors? First factor as per his theory is self awareness, self confidence, accurate self assessment and emotional self awareness. So, self awareness on emotions that is the first factor as per this theory. Second one is social awareness, empathy responsiveness to others and organizational awareness. So, that is our second strength or second view of uh, emotional intelligence or second factor of emotional intelligence. Third one is self management. It means adaptability, emotional self control, positive outlook and initiative that is the third factor. Fourth one is relationship management, conflict management, inspirational leadership influence and teamwork. So, if you have high score on emotional intelligence then you must have all these factors in your personality which are broadly related to you and how do you deal your emotions as well as how do you deal with other emotions. 
then in his uh, theory or in his psychological test mood management self motivation these type of factors are also important handling feelings so that you respond to the situation appropriately so this is the way to manage our mood self motivation gathering up your feelings and directing yourself towards a goal despite self doubt inertia and impulsiveness so self motivation ability to motivate yourself and ability to manage your negative emotions like self doubt uh, inactivity or impulsiveness and then try to motivate or keep continue motivation that is also part of this emotional intelligence theory so broadly it can be divided in two uh, sections intrapersonal and interpersonal emotional intelligence factors so he has focused on both in his theory now third model is quite different that is uh, not like uh, first and second one petrite actually focused on intelligence by considering trait emotional intelligence when we say trait to some extent these factors are actually stable patterns in our behavior and uh, he has listed about 15 traits to define emotional intelligence first of all his definition petrites defined emotional intelligence as a constellation of emotional self perceptions located at the lower level of personality hierarchies so he said in personality there are various factors and i think if you know about personality then easily you can understand that we describe personality by a number of factors by a number of uh, you know variables and uh, certain type of personality has composition of certain type of factors for example if we talk about famous model of personality then we can take example of big five factors and these big five factors at the super factor level and then there are six factors under each these big factors and then eight items in nupi uh, psychological test in nupi psychological test there are five big factors then each factor has six sub factors or can say variables and then each variable or this sub factor has eight items so like that nupi has 240 items similarly he is saying that th these are not the big five or big factors of but these are lower level of personality hierarchies and these factors are composition of emotional intelligence as per his theory the construct provides a comprehensive operationalization of the affect related aspects of personality so he said in his theory he has identified all affect or emotion related factors under this category and uh, laid wholly outside the taxonomy of human cognitive ability so these are not part of uh, cognitive abilities but these are personality factors and these are reflecting as affect or emotional aspects of a personality so uh, i think you can easily understand there is significant difference between previous two models and this model so how this is different from ability emotional intelligence so trait emotional intelligence and ability emotional intelligence are different mode at uh, when we say trait emotional intelligence it means personality traits and measurement can be done by self report or a psychological test on the other hand ability emotional intelligence they focus more on cognitive ability and measurement maximum performance almost except this model i think in all other emotional intelligence models we can say maximum performance is correlated with high level of emotional intelligence and they have identified that the ways to or the factors which contribute to our best performance uh, apart from cognitive factors these all factors they have counted as emotional intelligence and related factors which are contributing to our performance so he has identified these 15 traits of emotional intelligence let's know about these 15 factors one by one these are the facets and uh, with the facets another point is high scores perceive themselves as 
high level of emotional intelligence. So, most of the, these factors are positive factors and we expect high score on these factors if we say you know you have higher level of emotional intelligence. So, first factor is adaptability, flexible and willing to adapt to new conditions. So, if you have high level of adaptability, then you have one facet of emotional intelligence as per this theory. Next one is assertiveness, forthright, frank and willing to stand up for their rights. So, assertiveness in your personality, willing to stand for your rights, that is another facet or factor of emotional intelligence. Third one is emotion perception, self and others, clear about their own and other people's feeling. So, you are able to understand, you are able to perceive clearly others emotions as well as your own emotions that is third facet of as per this theory. Next one is emotion expression, your level on emotion expression again contributing to high level of emotional intelligence. It means capable of communicating their feelings to others. So, what are our ways and how much comfortable we are when we are communicating our feelings to others. Next is emotion management uh, of others and uh, capable of influencing other people's feeling. When we are able to influence their feelings, their emotions, then that is another factor which is contributing to emotional intelligence as per this theory. Next one is emotion regulation capable of controlling their emotions. So, ability to regulate emotions as well as capable to control as per requirement. Next one is impulsiveness, definitely this is negative characteristics. So, we expect low score to have high level of emotional intelligence. It means reflective and less likely to give in to their urges. Uh, next one is relationships, it means capable of having fulfilling personal relationship. So, if you are capable of having good or and uh, fulfilling personal relationship, then that is one factor which is contributing as per this theory to your to your emotional intelligence. Self esteem is the next one, successful and self confidence, self motivation, it means driven and unlikely to give up in the face of adversity. So, ability to keep continue or persistency and uh, even at the time of adversity, you are standing with you and keeping continue your work. Social awareness, accomplished networkers with excellent social skills. So, that is social awareness. Next one is stress management. You just see these are the traits which are not part of uh, emotional intelligence as per other theories, but here he is talking about stress management trait empathy, trait happiness, trait optimism. So, stress management capable of withstanding pressure and regulating stress, trait empathy capable of taking someone else perspective. So, when you are able to understand others view empathetically that is uh, you know in terms of trait when we are saying it means we are expecting a little bit more stable patterns in your behavior because that is trait of your personality. Next is trait happiness, cheerful and satisfied with their lives. So, if you are happy and having optimism, confident and like to look on the bright side of life, then these factors again contributing to emotional intelligence. So, you just see even trait optimism, trait happiness, trait empathy, stress management, these are also important factors to have higher level of emotional intelligence. So, one more lesson we must learn from this theory. This uh, lesson is if we are having uh, psychological test as per this theory, we must have questions related to these five traits. So, it means your emotional intelligence will be assessed even on the basis of trait happiness, trait optimism, trait empathy and that is why operational definition as per particular theory, its explanation and psychological test based on this particular theory must be highly highly connected with each other. Fourth model is Baron emotional intelligence model. Emotional intelligence as per Baron's theory, an array of non-cognitive capabilities 
competencies and skills that influence one's ability to succeed in coping with environmental demands and pressures. So, you just see here uh, to some extent stress as well as its management is reflecting in this theory and he observed that these are non-cognitive capabilities and uh, you know skills and certain factors which are influencing our performance, our ability and ability to handle environmental demands and pressures. He identified factors that were related to success in life. So, he focused more on uh, achievement, on success in life and which factors along with cognitive abilities are responsible for this success and achievement and he focused on all those factors. So, that is why you know like Goldman theory like ability model again it is more reflecting in organization sectors. He also asked same question, why some people with moderate IQ do well in life while others with high IQ fail and that is why he said actually there are some other factors which are contributing along with IQ or along with uh, cognitive capabilities. So, we must focus on those factors also. He said emotional intelligence components resemble personality factors, but can be changed and altered because we count that emotional intelligence can be learned. And that is another reason why psychologists focus more on emotional intelligence compared to intelligence because we cannot change much in intelligence of someone, but emotional intelligence can be learned, can be altered, can be changed if we have certain uh, intervention programs or therapies to facilitate emotional intelligence. As per this model, he focused mainly on four aspects, intrapersonal, interpersonal, stress management and adaptability and he said actually these are the ways to have effective performance. Then in detail about these factors, as per this theory these are the intrapersonal factors. When we say intrapersonal factors, it means emotional self-awareness, assertiveness, self-regard, self-actualization, independence. So, these are the intrapersonal factors or factors with us which are contributing to emotional intelligence. When we talk about interpersonal, then interpersonal relationship, empathy, social responsibility, these are the factors for interpersonal relations. Third one is adaptability, problem solving, flexibility, reality testing and the fourth stress management, stress tolerance and impulse control, these are the factors for intrapersonal, interpersonal adaptability and stress management as per this theory and he also included general mood. General mood means optimism and happiness. Again some of these factors are similar to Petrides state theory. On the other hand, he has his unique explanation also to define emotional intelligence and he proposed it in uh, organization sectors that is why he discussed about his uh, emotional quotient's applications and he observed that this emotional quotient is very important in certain settings and it has applications in organization sector. When we are saying uh, recruiting high performers, then we can use such kind of scores or emotional quotient. Uh, retaining high performer, we can use this uh, emotional quotient score for team building we can use, managing diversity it can be used, leadership development can be used, for coaching can be used and performance management, uh, for performance management it can be, for risk management emotional quotient can be used or it has high level of applicabilities in such type of situations. For self development it can be used, for change management, merger, integration and reshaping culture, restructuring and rearrangement and uh, stress management for career planning. So, these are the situations where you can use emotional quotient and can have some ways to study such kind of situations and role of performance and how emotional quotient could help to understand such kind of situations. Then next point is if it is so important then can we change emotional intelligence level. There are some therapies 
as well as some intervention programs that is more part of applied positive psychology. So, I am not going in detail on this topic however, just to show certain studies and how emotional intelligence therapies as well as programs are available and doing well in recent or in modern psychology. So, just to get this idea let us take certain examples. It is emotionally focused therapy and emotion focused therapy. There are several scholars who have worked on uh, such kind of therapies and these therapies are designed to help clients achieve more adaptive functioning by evoking and exploring emotions and restructuring maladaptive emotional schemas. There are some again stable patterns in our behavior which we called uh, schemas. So, we have broadly two type of schemas, adaptive schemas and maladaptive schemas. Then related to emotional schemas, we may have adaptive as well as maladaptive one. So, if we have certain ways to identify maladaptive emotional schemas in your behavior, in your personality and then try to change them in terms of uh, say adaptive emotional schemas. So, such kind of therapies are available and these therapies in fact facilitate higher level of emotional intelligence. Second one is emotion focus therapy in which they focus on acceptance, exploration and discharge of emotions related to the loss. So, they focus on the how we should explore and how we can discharge of emotions if we had some loss in our life. So, they focus on different aspects of emotions to have better understanding as well as uh, you know better way of handling our emotional components. Next one is again I am saying there are I think hundreds of intervention programs available to improve emotional intelligence, but I have taken here only one just to share with you how certain programs are going on and in these programs uh, even in at school level in organization sectors they are trying to improve level of emotional intelligence. This example is from the collaborative for academic social and emotional learning program. And uh, you could see here in this program social and emotional learning program there are various components they try to improve during schooling. So, self awareness uh, related activities they have in this program, self management oriented activities they have, responsible decision making ways school students learn, social awareness, relationship skills. So, all these skills they develop during schooling in uh, schools under this program and uh, in this process they have involved various uh, you know levels like classroom level or setting they have, schools level activities and setting they have as well as homes and communities involved in this program. So, similarly they have observed that this particular program in terms of curriculum and instructions it is and then school wide practices and policies. So, certain activities at the level of school have been involved as well as family and community partnership is there. So, on all levels this program is going on and it is quite effective program number of uh, you know research papers showing its effectiveness. So, like that there are various other intervention programs uh, which have promising results on emotional intelligence and they are trying to change to improving em level of emotional intelligence so that it could contribute positively to our life. After knowing about emotional intelligence, let us know about positive coping also. A response aimed at diminishing the physical, emotional and psychological burden that is linked to stressful life events and daily hassles. So, we have certain ways or uh, reasons which are the causes of physical, emotional and psychological burdens and through these copings we want to reduce that burden and we want to reduce burden of uh, stressful events as well as daily hassles which may have you know burden on our physical, emotional or psychological components. So, positive coping is how we can reduce that burden that is uh, important for us. So, there are various coping styles, first one is emotion focused copings. In emotion focused coping 
directed at regulating emotional response to problems. So, we regulate our emotional responses to solve the problem or to understand the problem in better way. The goal is to deal with emotional reaction to a stressor and uh, we, it includes process such as avoidance, denial, seeking emotional support and positive appraisal. So, these are certain ways through which we reduce our emotional reactions to a stressor and we learn how it can happen. So, they are saying that there are two, three ways. One is emotion focused. Focus is primarily on emotional reactions to a stressor and uh, then we try to change way of uh, perceiving this stressor so that we could reduce our stress level. Second one is emotional processing, understanding reaction to a stressor, what kind of uh, you know reaction we have, how we can change it in light mode that is you know handled in under this category. Next one is emotional expression, expressing emotions related to a stressor. So, these are the ways which we learn to reduce our uh, you know stressors impact and this is called emotion focused coping. Next one is problem focused coping. In problem focused coping, we focus more on the problem rather on our emotions. So, it includes strategies as defining the problem, generating and weighing alternate solutions and following a plan of action. So, because in this case, we are focusing on problem that is why we define, redefine if it is required uh, that problem and then we generate number of solutions and solutions which are suitable to us and then plan of actions in which we follow those alternate solutions. Broadly, the focus is on the solution or cognition related to the stressor. So, in this case, sometime on situation, sometime on cognition, we focus to solve our problem. So, if it is a behavioral, take action to fix a real world situation. So, when we say behavioral, then we just focus on the problem to solve it, action oriented we can say this, this strategy is. Second one is cognitive, change thinking to fix a problem. So, uh, change your thinking process to fix the problem. So, broadly as per the requirement, whether need to take action or just change your uh, thinking process to solve the problem. So, out of these two, whichever is required at per the situation, they use it. Third one is emotional avoidance. However, it is not appreciated much, but still this is another strategy or coping style. Avoid, ignore or deny the reality of the either the stressor or the emotional consequences or both. So, we just avoid those emotional settings which may hamper our well being that is the third uh, strategy. Let us know another component which is very important to understand emotional reactions that is emotional regulation. Emotional regulation includes responding to others emotions, maintaining thoughts, behaviors and expressions within a culturally and socially acceptable range. So, ability to regulate your emotion is emotional regulation broadly we can say. Our limbic system is considered to be the seat of emotions and it plays a major role in emotional regulation. So, limbic system is a part or in our brain which has significant role when we are dealing with emotional regulation. Self regulation strategies for emotional regulation includes mindfulness, breathing, guided imagery, grounding oneself with the five senses etcetera. So, uh, because that is very important for us that is why we have various strategies or intervention programs through which we learn to regulate our emotion in better way and uh, mindfulness, some breathing exercise like that there are various ways of. Research on emotional regulation has investigated several topics relevant to emotional intelligence. There are various studies that examined how to improve emotional regulations. Let us take one example. A study of emotional regulation taught people greater acceptance, tolerance and active modification of negative emotions over 6 weeks using techniques of cognitive behavioral therapy. In this cognitive behavioral therapy, they had various components like education, relaxation techniques, emotional labeling, imagery training, goal setting 
uh, these are the major part of this intervention. After 6 months, researchers found significant increase in the skills required for emotional regulation. So, that is one of the intervention programs. There could be various others which are showing promising results to improve emotional regulation. In this series, let us know one more concept that is emotional hygiene. It is quite new and very interesting it is. For this, I will suggest to watch some TED talks programs by Gayavich. He has series of talks on this topic. The talk which I have selected here, how to practice emotional first aid and he has asked number of questions and gave importance to psychological health, emotional health and uh, he is saying that why we are giving more importance to physical health as compared to psychological health. So, let us know about this talk and for details again I will recommend to watch some of his talks on YouTube. So, in this talk he has started with we all know how to maintain our physical health, but what do we know about maintaining our psychological health that is his question. What do we teach our children about emotional hygiene he is asking and he is defining as well as giving importance of this concept. Why is it that our physical health is more important to us than our psychological health. And then he is talking about why it is important and he is argued that we sustain psychological injuries like failure or rejection or loneliness more often than physical injuries. And still we are not giving importance to our emotional health, our psychological health and giving more importance to physical health comparatively in this talk he is talking about all. Psychological emotional injuries can also worsen if we ignore them and they can impact all areas of our lives that is why we must give importance to our psychological emotional health. Even though there are scientifically proven techniques to treat our psychological injuries we do not. He said that there are various techniques if we learn those techniques we could avoid or could reduce impact of psychological injuries. We need to close the gap between our physical and our psychological health and to make them equal like twins. So, in this talk he is saying that we should give uh, equal importance to our physical as well as psychological health. And you know even in Indian model we are not considering them too independent. We know our physical health is highly connected with emotional or psychological as well as psychological and emotional highly connected with bodily changes. There are some concepts even in a main field of psychology in which we are talking about psychosomatic and somatopsychological factors. Furthermore, he discusses about psychological wounds like loneliness which creates a deep psychological injury that distorts our perceptions and thinking. He is saying that loneliness triggers same areas in our brain which are triggered by pain. So, that is why he is saying we should take care of such kind of uh, negative aspects in our personality like uh, feeling of helplessness, rejection is extremely painful and uh, we do not bother much and uh, having emotional bleeding in such situations. So, he is also talking about emotional bleeding and he gave very interesting example. He is saying that after getting a cut we never think oh I am going to take a knife and see how much deeper I can make it. But we do that with psychological injuries all the time and he is call calling this concept as emotional bleeding because we are thinking again and again on the same mode, on the same point, on the same topic and that is called emotional bleeding. So, why this emotional bleeding is, why it is so? Because of poor emotional hygiene he is saying in his talk because we do not prioritize our psychological health that is why we are not interested to know or we do not know much about emotional hygiene that is why knowingly or unknowingly we are doing emotional bleeding. Stop emotional bleeding he is saying that our mind and our feelings are not trustworthy friends. So, during this situation they are inclined or they are more towards negativity. So, that is why he is saying that we should have certain trainings 
to manage our mind as well as our feelings. We know from several studies that when your self-esteem is lower, you are more vulnerable to stress and anxiety, that failures and rejections hurt more and it takes longer period to recover from them. So he is saying that during low level of self-esteem, I think one should take care more as compared to their routine days. He is saying that we should know the way to protect our self-esteem. When you get rejected, the first thing you should do is revive your self-esteem. When you are in emotional pain, treat yourself with the same compassion as you would expect from a truly good friend. So, there are certain concepts which are actually connected with each other. For example, if you could recall, I discussed about a web of positive psychology in which we observed that there are various positive psychological constructs which are highly connected with each other. So, similarly, such kind of uh, you know ideas or points have been highlighted by other scholars also. For example, Neff in her work, she is saying that compassion, when we are dealing with others, we should have compassion. So, similarly, she is talking about self-compassion. When you are dealing with yourself, especially when you are in low mode, having low self-esteem, then the way to deal with oneself or yourself, you should know called self-compassion. So, he is saying that, you know, we should know how we should deal with ourself when we are in low or in trouble mode. We have to catch our unhealthy psychological habits and change them. And one of unhealthiest and most common habit is called rumination. Ruminating about upsetting events can easily become a habit. So, I think this is even characteristics of a depressed person because most of the time they are thinking about their negative thoughts or negative happenings in their life. So, that is why he is saying that we should know what we should think, what we should experience and how you, we should manage or regulate our emotions. So, he is saying, you know, battle negative thinking we should know and we should know how we can build emotional resilience. So, that is called emotional hygiene. There are two, three more talks by this scholar and I think that is very important area to learn when we are talking about emotional component. Emotional hygiene is really important to understand and not only for uh, learning in a subject or uh, in positive psychology course, but this concept is really very touchy and it has important applications in our life. Similarly, I have selected one another scholar's work, he is just giving importance to emotional intelligence. So, that is Ronan Habib's talk, emotional intelligence, the skill our students deserve. Again, I will recommend to watch this video at YouTube and uh, know more about his uh, ideas on emotional intelligence and what is relevance of emotional intelligence. He compared emotional intelligence with compass that helps us find direction. So, he is saying that like compass, uh, we can get direction through it. So, similarly, emotional intelligence help us to show certain directions in our life. And uh, then he is giving example of his life saying that how he uh, dropped uh, computer science and selected economics. And he is saying that as per his requirement, that was his uh, emotional intelligence decision, selecting economics over computer science. He says, I do not teach a discipline, I teach people and I wanted my students to have the skills that so fundamentally changed me. He is talking about learn skills of emotional intelligence. He also discussed about the Goldman's theory and uh, focused on different factors like uh, self-awareness, social skills, empathy, self-regulation, motivation, etc. And then he is saying that why do not we focus on emotional intelligence? He asked, do we provide 21st century skills to our students? We do not teach these skills in our education institutes. However, there are some programs which are going on, but it is not available everywhere. These are all skills that are highly valued by companies worldwide. 
and uh, then he is giving example from as HR executives from different companies who listed EI among the skills and also said it is very difficult to find people who possess these skills, emotional intelligence skills. So, he is saying that like Google offers a course called search inside yourself. They are offering these courses uh, because our education system is failing to provide them. Education system provide some emotion intelligence oriented intervention programs so that at early stage students can learn these things. Imagine the benefits to our society well beyond the workplace if schools actually provides these skills. Then he is talking about this program which I discussed in the last uh, slides, social and emotional learning program and he is saying that uh, the benefits of this program. He quoted the study in which results showing that up to 50 percent of children improving achievement scores, 38 percent improving GPA suspensions dropping by 40 percent students and kids showing 63 percent significantly more positive behavior. So, through this study he wants to show how these type of programs are effective and have positive change in their behavior in terms of uh, academic achievements as well as their positive behavior. Like that there could be various other topics under this topic positive emotional states and processes. I have tried to include most important, but still some more can be added here. So, let us review what we have studied here. We have discussed in this chapter positive affectivity, then positive emotions, then on the basis of positive emotions the broaden and build theory of positive emotions we discussed emotional intelligence and its importance we discussed. Then we discussed about positive coping. Next topic was emotional regulation, emotional hygiene etcetera. I think you would be agree on this point emotional states and processes are very important as Aristotle mentioned that anyone can become angry that is easy, but to be angry with the right person to the right degree at the right time for the right purpose and in the right way that is not easy and that can be learned through certain intervention programs or certain therapies in this direction. Thank you very much.